Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of the Science Applied series. In this video, we're hitting a chest and back focused upper body day. And this is gonna be the second upper body workout for the week. So day four of our new upper lower split based on my new upper lower size and strength training program. And as we'll see at the end, when we tally up the total training volume for both sessions, I think you can easily run these workouts as a four day upper lower split and still have enough weekly volume to make progress, especially if you're further from that more advanced end of the training experience spectrum. So after after completing the full warm up routine, which will be the topic of my next science applied video, we're going to jump into our first exercise for the day, which is the bench press, where we're doing three sets of six reps in week one, and then adding one rep each week until we get to eight reps in week three before going back to six reps again in week four, but with more weight. Now we're starting with the bench press because I think if I had to pick just one overall mass builder for the pecs, it would be the basic barbell bench press. According to the strengthandconditioningresearch.com database, long-term studies show that a strength training program made up of the bench press on its own is able to produce considerable hypertrophy of the chest. And this 2012 study showed that bench press one rep max and pec muscle thickness increased perfectly in tandem across 24 weeks. So a stronger bench and bigger pecs go perfectly hand in hand. And since on the first upper body day, we used a closer grip bench press with slightly less arch to target the upper pecs and triceps more, here we're using a bigger arch and a wider grip to target more of the sternal head of the mid pecs, even though the entire pec will be highly active in both variations it's just a matter of regional emphasis. And one thing I wanted to focus on here is using explosive power off the chest to move the weight up with max speed and then lowering the weight back down under control. According to a Stronger by Science write-up of a 2014 paper, which I'll link down below, subjects saw about double the strength gains by lifting the bar with maximum speed on each rep as opposed to a slower cadence, even when equating training volume and intensity. Now the catch is that if you're pushing these sets close to failure anyway, you know, the rep speed isn't gonna matter much. Slow speeds and explosive speeds both work. But if you're training submaximally, as we usually do on these heavy compound lifts anyway, then it makes much more sense to drive the bar off your chest with as much explosive power as possible. So as you lower the bar, you wanna bring it down to the highest contact point on your chest, pause briefly for half a second or so, and then explode off your chest as if you had a one rep max on there, pressing the bar back and up as you think about pushing the floor away from you at the same time. And the goal here is to maximize the weight we can use while still using a full range of motion and maintaining proper positioning. Okay, up next we're doing three sets of eight reps on a weighted wide grip pull up with two forced negatives on every set. So we're doing the first eight reps as usual with a full stretch at the bottom and a full contraction at the top where we're aiming to get our chin up over the bar on every rep. And then after your eighth rep, you're gonna use a box to jump up over the bar and then take the weight back down nice and slow for two forced eccentrics. Or you can use a training partner to help lift you up on the positive and then take the negative yourself. And according to one paper from Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, because a muscle isn't fully fatigued during concentric training, heavy negatives may elicit greater motor unit fatigue and thus provide an additional hypertrophic stimulus. Now these sets should feel pretty intense, so I'd recommend starting with just body weight if you're not able to complete the first eight reps with good form. And if that's still too challenging for you, then you can always use the assisted pull-up machine to knock out the first eight reps and then use the jump method without assistance to knock out the two force negatives. Regardless on every rep, including the forced reps, you wanna feel a strong stretch and a strong mind-muscle connection with your lats on each and every eccentric contraction. After that, we're doing two sets of eight to 10 reps on the barbell floor press, which I think is actually one of the most underrated exercises for hypertrophy of the pushing muscles. Now, it's really common to see power lifters use this variation to help develop lockout strength on the bench. Now, I think bodybuilders can also benefit from it since it's really gonna hammer your triceps in a way that most pressing movements can't while still having a lot of carryover to pure bench press strength. So you can think of the floor press more like a close grip bench press where the elbows are more tucked in by the sides. You can still use that standard 1.5 times shoulder width grip or so. Also, since this variation eliminates leg drive, you won't be able to move as much weight here so you wanna start light and then progressively overload as the weeks go by. All right, up next we're doing three sets of 12 reps on a unilateral cable row. And one thing that I find a 
lot of people neglect with their back training is unilateral work, which I think is part of the reason why it's so common for trainees to have left to right strength and size imbalances. So by isolating each side one at a time, starting with your weaker side and then matching the reps with the same weight with your dominant side, you're gonna ensure that both sides are contributing equally. And we're using the row here as a more lat dominant movement. So we're thinking about driving the elbows down and in against the sides rather than straight back, which would target more of the traps and rear delts. Okay, after that, we're hitting two sets of 12 reps on the Arnold press, which is a great assistance vertical press to complement the standard barbell OHP on day one, because you actually initiate the press here with horizontal shoulder abduction. So you get the rear delts more involved right away, and then it transitions into a more standard dumbbell shoulder press. Also doing the standing is gonna force you to check your ego, because you won't be able to go as heavy due to increased stabilization demands. However, for the same reason, the side delts are gonna get more involved as well. So this is such a solid overall shoulder builder, front to back, and you can include it in your routine if you're not already. All right, up next, we've got two sets of 10 and 10 reps on the reverse pec deck. Now here we're doing a sort of mechanical drop set where for the first 10 reps, we're gonna slouch the upper body forward into full scapular protraction. This is really gonna take the traps out of the movement and isolate the rear delts. And then for the next 10 reps, without resting or dropping the weight, we're gonna straighten the back out and intentionally allow the shoulder blades to protract and retract on every rep. So squeeze your shoulder blades together on every rep for the next 10 reps, and that's gonna allow you to extend the set further as the traps get more involved and help the rear delts crank out those extra effective reps. And similar to the pull-up, you should be reaching near failure on the first 10 reps before moving on to the second lot of 10 reps. Okay, just about finishing out the workout here, we're gonna finish with some tricep and bicep isolation work. So first we're doing three sets of rope tricep pushdown 21s, where we're doing seven reps in the bottom half of the range first, focusing on really squeezing the triceps at the bottom of each rep, and then seven reps in the top half, where we're focusing on stretching the triceps at the top, and then we're gonna do the final seven reps through a full range of motion to really finish the triceps off. And while we've been avoiding failure on most of the compound pressing moves so far, leaving a rep or two in the tank. Now here we're gonna take the triceps pretty much all the way to failure, since there's a much lower risk of accumulating systemic fatigue on a single joint isolation movement like this. And to finish off the workout, you can optionally add in two sets of 15 to 20 reps on a constant tension preacher curl. Uh, since growing my biceps is a goal of mine, I wanna hit them directly with a higher frequency. And even though they will be highly active in the pull-ups and rows we've hit already, I think including some isolation work is smart to maximize their development. Um, so we've done all the heavy compound stuff. Now we're really trying to isolate the biceps, not resting in between reps and keeping the hands and forearms as loose as possible while thinking about only moving the bar by flexing and squeezing your biceps, not your forearms. And you can even let your wrists go into a bit of extension here, which is gonna put the elbow flexors of the forearm in a weaker position leaving the biceps to do more of the work. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna tally up the volume here for each body part for both upper body workouts and put it up here on the screen if you'd like to pause and read for more on volume. And I think this is plenty of volume for beginners and most intermediate level trainees, just running this as a four day per week split. Uh, but if you are more advanced, I think you can add in a third workout each week, uh, focusing on whatever your specific weak point is. And my upper lower size and strength program is geared more toward intermediate to advanced level lifters. So it uses a six day per week split with every body part being hit three days per week. And if you'd like to have all of this information condensed down into a nine week training program with a full progression scheme and tracking sheet built in, uh, you can grab it at jeffnippard.com. So I'll put a button to the program over here next to my head if you'd like to check it out. And the next Science Applied video is gonna cover the full warm up routine. Um, so don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.